Okay, so uh, the first thing I wanted to discuss um, has to do with the the exercise I asked you to explore uh, for your uh, um, for a bit of of exposure to these non-parametric methods that uh, that explore data kind of on its own terms without hewing to a particular model. Um, and uh, particular, particularly data uh, exploration that's based on sort of state space inspired uh, uh, exploration uh, of the data. Uh, so I had asked you as part of the exercise to uh, plot out um, some aspects of the data um, in a uh, 3D plot. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you what what I had uh, for this, and uh, you know, hopefully you can compare it a little bit uh, to what what you saw. Um, so we were operating off of a data set that I provided you, um, which contains data um, modeled. Um, modeled after uh, COVID-19 infections from a rich agent-based model um, that we use day to day to inform a decision-making or recently the absence of, of effective decision-making. Um, uh, it, the results have been presented, but, uh, but not adopted of late, um, uh, apparently partly inspired by a, a certain truck convoy of of uh, ill repute. Um, uh, and um, uh, this data was designed to capture um, and capture patterns over time. It's a set of time series, um, uh, co contemporary time series. So in other words, uh, there are cotemporaneous would be a better term. They're, they're all measured on the same time frame daily. Um, and it consists of variously uh, we have cases, we have data on um, uh, those by age, um, as well as overall, um, the numbers that are in um, hospital, um, in ICU, um, or in, uh, in um, non-ICU related uh, acute placement and, and hospital wards, new hospitalizations, so rather than being the number of occupying beds right right now it is a snapshot it's the new ones that have come in in the past day um and similarly for icu and then deaths um and what i asked you to do was to um use a 3d plot in which you would um explore some of the patterns in that data um uh and particularly i wanted you to to use a 3D plot where, you know, successive data points within that plot are uh, a representative of successive timelines, um, successive days, and where the location of a data point, it, its X location might correspond, say, to um, the number of cases. Um, and uh, its Y location might correspond to the number of, uh, a number of hospital admissions um, uh, and its Z location to the no total in hospital. I actually reversed the last two from, from what I, I suggested. And I had provided a bit of R code uh, to make this a bit easier, but I also noted that through Excel's uh, 3D plot, you can, um, you can create that on your own. Um, so I'll show you what uh, came out of my explorations here. Um, and people are welcome to, to speak up if uh, they want to you know, ask questions about it. Um, so what, uh, what I was looking at here um, was uh, essentially something like, like this. Uh, so again, we have synthetic cases here on the, um, on the x-axis. We have uh, synthetic uh, hospital admissions on the z-axis and uh, hospital census here on the, uh, the y-axis. Um, and uh, what I show, and I, I'm not sure how, 
how well it will show up um, in my sort of projection of the screen. Um, but you can actually see there's a bit of a, um, uh, there's certain patterns here in the data. Um, one thing that's not entirely obvious when you plot it this way, but will be for the next uh, exercise where it's plotted out in a uh, delay embedded fashion is that um, there are kind of trajectories arcing around here. These points are color coded according to the spectrum of colors, the visible spectrum um, going from uh, violet um, uh, on the extreme high energy and, and uh, uh, this would correspond to early, uh, early days uh, to red for, um, for, for later days. Um, you can see this cluster of red points and these little black circles are indicative of kind of the final points. The bigger circle is the final, final one and successive sizes of circles reflect sort of those a little bit further back. Um, but one thing that uh, you may see, you may note um, when you explored it or, or here is uh, there are these, um, this is not just randomly splatted down. There are these groupings as it were. And it's, it turns out if you tease it out a little bit more, um, there's not only clusterings of sorts, but there are these loops, these trajectories. Um, and for example, there's one here that kind of goes and loops back. And this red one has uh, a bit of a, a trajectory structure to it, et cetera. These tend to be very pronounced in more extensive data um, from particular jurisdictions for COVID-19. Um, and uh, they, they correspond to a certain, a certain uh, historical patterning that's in that data, um, uh, if you were to graph it out over time. Does anyone want to bring forward uh, a thought? These kind of loops in, in this sort of collapsed state space, projected state space. This isn't the, the full true state space, but it's kind of a, a proxy for it. Any idea what those loops might correspond to? Um, uh, the fact that it's we see this loop what might that correspond to uh, in in terms of a of a of a time series or you know patterns we see over time? Anyone? Don't see anything in the chat. Anyone? These may be a little bit more obvious when we look at it um, a little bit bit smaller so the points get more concentrated um well it turns out that you know this is a situation where we have a sort of departure and return back to the point of that departure and a point here reflects a certain circumstance in terms of cases hospital admissions in a hospital census. Um, it ref reflects, as it were, a certain situation as summarized by those three variables. Um, and if we get a loop from kind of this situation here, going around and coming back, it's, it's indicative of, of a, a cycle of sorts, a cycle over time simultaneously in terms of cases, in terms of hospital admissions, and in terms of hospital census. Um, now, you know, traditionally we, we interpret a model's behavior, most, most common lens is we, we have a graph over time. And if we wanna see one variable, we put it up there. If we wanna see another, we put it up. If we wanna see a third, we, we put yet another up. Um, and uh, if we're, uh, Fortunate, we might be looking at them the same graph. Often we look at them in separate graphs. And it doesn't capture visually with enormous clarity kind of what goes with what for the values of those variables. This graph is exactly designed to do that. It's, it's kind of showing by its very location of a point here on the, you know, in this, uh, in this diagram. 
it's suggestive simultaneously of what cases, what hospital admissions, and what census occurred together, which what were contemporaneous. And, uh, uh, and then you see uh, uh, you know, patterns in that about how they evolve together, how they accompany each other. Uh, and uh, a loop around will indicate it kind of has returned to the original situation. And it would correspond to cycles in all three of these variables together that are in some sense um, synchronized cycles. They're, they're, they're taking place together. They grow together, for example, and they shrink together. If one grows faster than the other, uh, it might go up on two axes, but not yet in the third and only come up on the third um, correspondingly. And uh, we see this all the time in empirical data from within our health system. And it's actually extraordinarily helpful because the human visual cortex um, has amazing abilities when it comes to recognizing patterns. Computers are, are great at many things, especially doing lots of stupid things quickly. Um, like doing runga kata integration or or Euler integration of a differential equation. That's that's just a great use for a computer. Humans are fantastic at seeing subtle patterns uh, when it comes to data, uh, whether the data originates from uh, you know cases and hospital missions and so on, or or patterns of discussion on social media or searches or or on wastewater or what have you. Um, and these structures, these kind of filaments, these, um, uh, these trajectories are a big part of what we see in empirical data. What we're going to be looking at for, um, for the next assignment actually takes this a little bit further where we're going to be looking at uh, delay embedded data. So this is the same time series, but, um, but just viewed with different levels of embedding. And I had argued from this floor, indeed, from this very seat, um, uh, not uh, four days thence, that uh, these loops here are indicative of, um, of cycles in phase space. They correspond directly to, they're just stretched and squeezed and compressed versions of, of cycles in state space. Uh, and we're going to be looking at those and uh, examining the structure. You notice this, um, if viewed from the side, it's very narrow. If viewed from this side, it's, it's quite wide. And uh, again, these sort of um, graphs can be very helpful for know, knowing where this system is going, uh, because there are regularities in this that are just not apparent in a time series graph. Um, so, so your next little exercise will, will involve uh, producing one or two graphs uh, of this sort and, and uh, commenting on them. Uh, we're going to be building up the set of data that you're going to be uh, exploring on the site. And I, I think I'm gonna try to post a, a further data set for that tonight, which will allow you to explore it with some real world data in addition to this, uh, uh, to the synthetic data. So um, discovery of patterns visually is not merely sort of idle musing. Um, it often course clues us into kind of regularities that are just not obvious from our traditional lens and state space plots and in their particular manifestation in delay embedded plots are really, really valuable tools in this. Hence their increasingly widespread use uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll be taking a look at this uh, a little bit further. What I really wish is I could show you some from within our health system, which are you know, extraordinarily insightful for where we're at and where we're going in the presence of massive changes to testing infrastructure and cases and, and um, uh, the, the diagnosis criteria for, um, well, the criteria for someone to be, um, uh, to, to qualify for testing, et cetera. Um,
Okay, so so that's a little bit of commentary on uh, on this uh, this exercise. One thing I did want to get from people um, is, yeah, I see I see people commenting of uh, outbreaks and indeed variants. Francis uh, put forward the idea that maybe some of those loops are associated with variants. And indeed, when we see a new variant emerge, um, Omicron case in point, Delta before it, Alpha in early 2021, um, we often see it accompanied by uh, an outbreak because it may exhibit immune evasion, may be able to break through immunity, take Omicron, right? Where, where uh, even a fully vaccinated person with two, two uh, shots of vaccine, um, even Pfizer or Moderna, you know, is, uh, is, is quite poorly protected uh, against Omicron. And so often you see this outbreak, a wave, and that wave gets captured in the state-space plots. Uh, so state-space plots provide this different lens a lens that focuses on the underlying situation um, at some sense or, or proxies for it. And uh, with embedding, it is provably um, kind of this, this stretched version of the underlying situation, whether we have a model for it or not. So um, I, I wanna get a bit of feedback um, from people. Um, uh, our, are people feeling okay creating these plots? I, I, I just want to be attuned to the uh, to the needs of, of students here. And if you need, you know, more specifics on the details of creating a plot in Excel, you want to know the exact plot type or anything, uh, please please uh, speak up now. Uh, maybe put it in the chat. You could put it as a private message to me if you'd like. I wasn't sure just how much text I should put in about, you know, use of Excel or whether you'd like the exact commands uh, that might be required within uh, R to, to pursue this. Hopefully UN's tutorials next week will aid that, but um, please let me know. Okay, um, okay, R tutorial, awesome. I do wanna emphasize something that's really good feedback. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, R is a formidable vehicle, and often it takes a little bit of time to get it used to, and then it clicks with students. And so we'll be working to get you over that, uh, that hump, um, and for students more generally. Uh, it's quite a, a, a formidable tool. Um, okay, uh, any other feedback on that? Nothing right now. Okay, uh, so I'm going to uh, 